Hey everybody, welcome back to Time Value Videos. In this video, we're going to talk about how to set up an automated notification for stocks, for whatever you want really, but the example is going to be how to set up an automated email from Google when a stock on your watch list changes percentage. So uh, what I did is I set up a Google Sheet and I put in a list of tickers. So I did ticker, the price that it's currently at. This is um, what its current, its last price is basically. Um, and then the percentage change. Um, so that's going to be my heading. And what's going to happen is I'm going to have this automatically every day at a certain time send me an email if the price change from the previous day has been more than a certain percentage. And I can change that limit whatever percentage I want. Um, so what I can do is Google Spreadsheets, Google Sheets has built-in functions for uh, Google Finance. And so I can use that and I can combine it with some code that I can put inside my Google Sheet so that it'll run on a set clock every day. So what I can do is I go back here. I have the this outline. You can add as much to this as you want, actually. So I'm just going to do it with three so you can have kind of, you know, you can see what to do. And if you want to go 5, 10, 15, whatever, you can just increase the numbers. But uh, I put my Microsoft, Apple, and this is Boeing. BA is Boeing stock. Um, you can keep adding more as you want. And then in uh, Google Sheets, you can use the function Google Finance. This doesn't work in Excel because Excel isn't Google, uh, but Google does it because they can. So Google Finance and then A2 is a reference to the ticker. And then the price is the attribute. You can put other stuff in here, and I'll show you how to do that in just a sec. But if you just put in price, then it'll come up with the price. And if I change this to, uh, let's put J&J &J for Johnson & Johnson, you can see these numbers automatically change. So uh, Johnson & Johnson is at 141, and apparently it has no uh, percentage change from the previous day, um, which is kind of interesting, but whatever. Um, but we can try some, let's do Home Depot. There you go. So you can see it's just a coincidence that Johnson Johnson didn't change in, as a percentage. Um, but yeah, so I'll go back. Well, I can just leave it. Home Depot's fine. Uh, yeah, Home Depot's fine to have in there. Um, so what I'm going to do is, uh, oh, and then I also did percentage change. So the formula for that is Google Finance, still reference the ticker symbol, and then the attribute is change PCT for percent. And that'll tell you as a percentage. And so when this says 3.58, that's 3.58%, not 358%. So 3.58%, and then uh, Boeing was down 1.1%, and Home Depot was down 0.18%. So that'd be like 18 basis points, you know. So, um, so we can use this, and what we can do is if you go into Tools, Script Editor, I already have it open, but if you click on it, it'll open over here. Um, and this uh, f uh, script is what we're going to use to automatically send those emails. So all I had to do was Google, uh, go to developers.google.com. You can just Google uh, tutorial sending emails from a spreadsheet, and you'll come up with this um, page. And this is the Google Developers website, so you can kind of get some uh, some ideas for for what you can use. Uh, but if you just copy and paste this exactly as it is under number four, copy and paste this script, uh, we can use that. And then we just have to make a couple changes to adjust this for what we want uh, our our system to do. And so. We have the sheet that we're on. Start row is row two. Uh, so I'm going to go here because row two is the first where we're actually, we're not dealing with anything in row one. Those are just our headings. So row two is where we start. Uh, the number of rows, and this is actually not the number of rows that you go down. It's the number of rows worth of data you have. And so right now I have three, I have three rows of data. So I'm going to use the number three, but it goes down to the row number four. But I don't use row number four I, because my data only sets up three rows. It's a three by three cell or array, three by three array. So this is, uh, this is actually a comment from what I copied. So it's actually fetch from A2 to uh, C4. Um, and that's what I have right here for between A2 and C4. Now for my data range, that's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, I'm getting the range between start row, which is two, and one, which is the column. So, so two comma one is right here, row two, column one, and then num rows, which is three, and uh, and column three. So I have, uh, in this case, it goes down three and over three. So one, two, three, one, two, three, just like that. Uh, so it gets the values there, and then the data get values, and then we do a little loop. And we've done for loops before in VBA, so this shouldn't be anything new, but the syntax is slightly different. So for i, which is just for every point, 
that we have in our data set, which is basically for every row in this case. Uh, the, the variable that we're working with is the row data I. So the email address we're going to send to will always be the same. In the example that we copied from, uh, from, from the Google developers thing, it has, a, it has you do a different email address each time in case you want to send multiple emails to different people. But in this case, we're just this is a notification for myself. So I'm sending it to myself every time. If you wanted to send um, notifications to other people, uh, maybe you're working on like a, like a newsletter or something and you want to send out um, timely information when you get a stock price movement and you want to send emails to, to people on your list. There is a limit to how many emails you can send from Google automated like this, but um, if you're sending to five or six people, I think you'll be fine. So I'm just having it sent to me because this is me notifying uh, myself that they've changed. And then the message that's going to be in the email is row zero, which means uh, zero is it's uh, the row that we're on and then column zero. So that's the ticker symbol, right? So whatever row we're on, column zero is the ticker symbol. The plus sign means like keep writing a sentence. And so it's ticker symbol bl blank has changed by and then row, whatever row we're on, column two, uh, which is if we start at zero, one, two. So it's going to give me whatever is in my percentage change. So if we look at this, it'll say uh, ticker symbol has changed by percentage. And then I put the percent sign. And so that actually doesn't need to be there. And we use a semicolon to end our statement. And then the subject of the email is going to be the ticker symbol has changed, exclamation point. And then another semicolon to end our statement. And then if row two, which, uh, sorry, it's if row column two, our percentage change is greater than five, then send the email. But that was when I had Microsoft on there and they were greater than five. So I'm going to change this. If it's greater than three, then send the email. And so what's going to happen is Apple has changed by more than 3%. But Home Depot and Boeing have not. So what I'm going to do is if I run this, it will only send an email for Apple because Apple is the only one that has gone up by more than 3%. And so if I hit run, it's actually not going to work yet, but I'm going to hit run to show you. So it's like compiling stuff. And it says, uh, this project, I didn't name it. So untitled project needs your permission to access your data. So I have to review my permissions. This is Google trying to be safe with people's stuff. It says, would you like to uh, uh, connect? So I'm going to connect that one. And, oh, this app isn't verified. That doesn't make any sense. Um, I'm going to go back. I'm going to try it again because this is a Google app, so there's no reason for it to be non-verified. Hit that. Hit advanced. Continue anyway. Type continue. Okay, continue. I think this might be because I shared it with myself, um, and that's going to mess stuff up, but I'm going to hit allow. There we go. So now you said it was running. I'm going to go back to here and I'm going to look and see. Uh, it might show up in my scent. Yeah, so Apple has changed by 3.58%. So I'm going to go back here and see 3.58. Apple changed by 3.58%. Okay, so uh, we see that that has sent an email, but that only sent the email when I hit run. And that's not very useful because I can just go look and see that it went up. So that's not helpful. What I should do is set a trigger. Uh, click here to set a trigger. Send emails time driven on hours and minutes so i can send hour or day day is probably good so w send it every day and since i live um in california the the new york stock exchange is open from 6 30 in the morning to 1 p.m my time so i'm gonna say send it at 2 p.m after the market's closed um and that should be good hit save and so this code will automatically run at 2 p.m every day so when the market closes then we'll know if Apple or whatever has changed and it'll be done. So if I want to add more to it, I can do that. I'll add Johnson Johnson again. I'll add Lowe's. Um, that's actually fine for right now. I just need to add a couple so you can see how it works. And then I copy that down. So now that's available. And then I just say, well, now instead of three, I actually have five data points. So I go up here and I say number of rows I have to work with is five. And everything else should work just fine. I will run it because it's, run, it's on a timer, but I can just run it whenever I want. I'm going to go back and see what happened. Well, yeah, Apple's still the only one that's more than 3%, so that's fine. But you'll just get an email again. So now all you have to do is, if you look in, you know, in my inbox, this is or something else, but um, it doesn't show up in my inbox, so you just have to use your, your email. You can set some settings to make sure that emails from you um, get marked as important and get uh, automatically sent to the inbox, so that way it's there and then it's available. So now I get a notification. 
uh, every day when the market closes based on uh, movements. And if I wanted to change my, my threshold, I can say, you know, if it's more than 1% or if it's more than 10% or whatever, um, it'll automatically notify me. And then I can go and check and see why that happened um, and see if maybe I want to trade it or something like that. So that's just, you know, something pretty easy to do. You put that in there. You can actually set different triggers. So you can change this formula to be some other thing uh, and set a trigger so that it'll automatically email you if, um, I don't know, all kinds of different, if it hits its 52 week high or if it's within 1% of its 52 week low or whatever, you know, you can figure out all kinds of triggers. The only thing that I've had a problem with uh, for Google is you can't use historic prices uh, and, and incorporate the now function. So if I wanted to do equals now, that's to get a date, that's to get right now as a date. Um, and if I wanted to use that for historic prices, it wouldn't really work. Um, so that's been an issue, but um, I'm going to try to figure out like a workaround for that so that I can do technical indicators so that I can automatically email, email myself when a technical indicator uh, happens. And then if it's maybe it's like it's uh, I can email when Home Depot crossed its 52 week moving average or something like that. Uh, but then this can, you know, kind of lead its way into auto trading or or at minimum just um, quick notifications to, to what trades you can make. So that's that. Thanks for watching and uh, be sure to comment or uh, send me a message or something if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.